and welcome back to the kitchen. Tonight I wanted to demo my homemade VU meter hack. Now this is not like an accurate dB or peak meter at all. It's uh, the idea behind this one is just to give me a visual representation of how loud my guitar is when I'm playing with the line in headphone system with my family band. All right, recently I made the leap and converted over to a virtual guitar rig which uses a computer and a guitar interface. Now, I still have my all my effect pedals and my rack stuff, but uh, I'm using these amp simulators and cabinet speaker simulators, and it makes, man, it sounds excellent. So anyway, I use like five different programs right now. I'm trying out all different stuff, and inside each one of those programs, there's all kinds of different sounds and amps. So you can imagine that the volume levels, they do vary quite a bit. And I have to be pretty close to about the same volume to match everyone else in the band with the headphones, you know. So, you know, these programs, they do most of them have like a visual representation. They'll be like an LED bar graph style meter, show you how loud you are. But the, this is cool. It's gonna, I'm going to mount this up in my rack, in my little guitar area, and then I can always, you know, it lights up. I can look over there and see right where I'm at. And also that... I ran into some stuff through FreeCycle, which is like uh, people want to donate stuff to the community, you know, stuff they don't want anymore, rather than packing it up in the car and driving it over to Goodwill. You just fire off an email to this FreeCycle, and it's great. I've gotten lucky and got some excellent stuff off of FreeCycle. So I ran into this, I think it's from 1950. It's a tube, vacuum tube based. Uh, voltmeter, real big sucker, and you know, like you have your one of these, you know, for playing around with electronics. Well, that's that's what this was, but from the 50s, and it was just a behemoth. I don't know if it was, it's made by HP, uh, Hewlett Packard. I don't know if it was made for the military or if that's just how good they made stuff back then. But I was amazed at the quality, the build quality on this device was, it's, it fired right up. You know, but uh, I couldn't keep the thing around. It was just a beast and didn't really do that much. So it turns out I, I'm going to use the chassis for the bass amp in our band. We blew up our bass amp. And so I got a new amp module coming. So I'm going to kind of redo all that and have a built in mixer and all this blah, blah, blah. But when I was tearing down the. Uh, when I was tearing down the, the multi, the old tube multimeter, it had this beautiful VU. Actually, it's not a VU meter. It's a DC meter, which is a little different. So I thought, well, you know, if I go ahead, if, I, if I'm able to, to rescue this, then it would be a little easier on my conscience that I just destroyed this magnificent tube multimeter uh, <laughs> to use, it, use the box of it, you know. So that's kind of the story behind this project. I'm going to shut the audio portion of it down and I'll give you a little tour of what's inside of this beast. We can take a look at the inside. So looking on the inside, you'll notice here's the meter. There was a capacitor that was on there. Now there are different types of meters. This is, it's a DC meter, I believe, uh, AC or DC. There's a, there's a difference. Now, the, the, the VU meters that are used for audio, those I believe those are AC, and they have something built inside called a rectifier. So, what you got to do, if you've got one of these meters and you want to test it, you can put some audio signal on it, and what you'll see, if it's the wrong type, it's not going to dance around with the music. It's just kind of bump up a little bit and sit there. If you put AC voltage to it, you know, like I, I took a large value resistor and an AC adapter and I applied that to this and I saw it going back and forth, you know, from the AC and that also told me that, well, yeah, you got the wrong kind. So I read around on the internet and they had a lot of more professional designs, like nobody really hacks these t together, any accurate one like I did. And I suppose I could calibrate this and get it actually correct. I would need to print out a new background. Um, 
there's something called ballast, which is like how it reacts. This is like really complicated stuff when you're dealing with, and I, and I did, I looked uh, commercially available. They had a beautiful stereo VU meter that's a decibel meter, you know, and that was like $520. So long story short, I w just wanted to get the thing working, and that's the purpose of this video, show off what I built. The box came from Michael's, and I just threw a little stain, and my wife uh, clear coat of it for me. Thank you very much, Kathy. Cooked it in the toaster oven. So, back to what was going on here. You can see I built a, I think it's a full wave rectifier, maybe that's called. Now, these are, these are shot key diodes. Now, the good thing about the shot key diodes is they have a lower voltage drop. So, when the volts pass through this device, it doesn't reduce the current as much as most other diodes. These here are 1 and 5818, which these are the diodes that I use for reverse polarity protection. And again, getting back to that, that they're, they don't reduce the voltage a real lot. For this particular instance, I like these Shockey diodes. You could, you could use uh, also the germanium diode as a lower voltage drop. Now, those are a little bit more expensive. They're kind of fragile glass guys, the, the geraniums that I got. And I like to save those for, for distortion boxes and stuff, overdrives, you know. They, they're expensive. They sound kick-ass. So I just use these shot keys. Whatever kind of low voltage drop diode you can get. And when you, when you put this together, it's just four diodes. And you can go ahead and Google the image uh, for, the, for the rectifier. I'll put an image up here, and you can see how... Two of the diodes are pointing one way, and the other two are pointing the other way, or <laughs> I don't know how I would word this, but the, you can see on the image, they're not all four facing the same direction. Um, so, and then through that, you have the input coming in on like the top and the bottom, the, the audio comes in, and then the output goes out the right and the left. So that, that was what I needed to produce. And so at that point, once I built my diode bridge, I just hooked up my, my iPod and uh, turned it all the way up and had the, the audio coming out with a jack going right into that, that rectifier. And sure enough, I had it. It was responding. So the next problem that I faced was um, it was barely moving. Because this is a DC meter, and it doesn't have the built-in, you know, this is made for a uh, voltmeter, it's not made for audio. Uh, the audio ones have that rectifier built-in, and when you hit them with line level, you know, they respond properly. Though, If it's loud audio, it'll go all the way up to the top. Well, that's not the case if you're hacking it together. You need something, give it a little more oomph, power it, you know, a buffer or an amplifier. So, what I ended up doing, uh, through my travels at Goodwill, I had found the, the Wowie Paper Jams amplifier. Hey, rock and roll paper jams. Hey, kids. So, they had the paper jams. <laughs> uh, they had a, it was a cardboard amp, you know, and they had a whole mess of these things at all of the resale stores in the area. They all, like, each place got like 20 to 50 of them. And they come with a nice stereo cable. To pick plug your plug your paper jams in. Hey, I got a plug in my axe, bro. Anyway, I did buy a couple of these things. They were really cheap. And inside of that, there was a, a little tiny SMD small size component amplifier board. Um, so that is the amp that I used. It's kind of a weird summing amp. Two channels in, one channel out. It's mono. And the idea is you could plug also plug a, a an iPod into it. So that's the amp that's driving the diode bridge that pushes the meter. Now you heard audio in the beginning, and what that is is inside this paper jams amp, instead of using a speaker, they have this I don't I forget what they're called. It's like a pressure transducer. It's basically it's it's a speaker that doesn't have the paper cone. And it attaches, the, the driver element attaches, is glued to the cardboard, so this paper jams amp. The whole amplifier body, the amplifier resonates, and that's what produces the audio. So I went ahead, this is a thin, almost like a balsa wood box. I just glued that speaker element to the box, and that's switchable. You can uh, turn that on or off, 
a little schwitzer. So you don't have to have that, but I figured why not? I, and I got a little monitor on here if I want it. And it's interesting, I, you know, obviously it does consume current uh, a good amount. So when, depending on if you have the speaker on or off, it affects how hard the needle hits. If it's on the speaker, it doesn't hit as hard. When you shut it off, it's gonna turn it up a little more. So for basically the signal path is, there's, here's the DC power input. I used a, you know, a cell phone charger that is recycled from somewhere. No shortage of these, five volts, one amp. Probably switching filtered power supply, pretty good little unit. Um, the paper jams ran off of six volts, so I'm running it off of five. And the audio comes in through this RCA and it goes to a pot. It's a 500 ohm uh, linear pot. And so that way I can adjust uh, how hard the needle hits. So that took care of my, uh, my calibration. <laughs> so it's pretty basic little uh, hack. I really like the way this thing turned out. Now, there was an onboard LED on the paper jam zamp board that sat right in here. I just extended those wires and put a yellow LED on the front of the chassis here. Let me know that it's, the amp board is running. It hasn't blown up yet. And let's see. Oh, yeah. The, 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 uh, the meter did not light up when we got it. It didn't light up, but what we did we put some lights in it. So now, as you can see, it does light up in there. Um, I don't know if you can see the bulbs in there. What we did, I, I had some old rope lights, you know, like a uh, rope light. And I think the one had failed. It was, it, you know what it was like? It was messed up. Someone had like run it over with a lawnmower or some kind of bad bath salt trip and they tried to floss their teeth with it or something and chewed it up. So I had this, I, I cut that open, dissected it, and pulled it out and there's, there's literally hundreds of tiny little incandescent light bulbs. They're so cute. So I, I mounted four of those in here. I did some tests and tried them in parallel with the power supply. And uh, with about four of them on there, it, they lit up. They, they looked like they weren't running too bright not too dim, about perfect for what I needed. So, set a couple over here, hot glued them in there, and then I had a couple right up here, and those, uh, the needle was hitting them. They were, they were taking up too much space, so I had to drop those down a little bit. So there you have it, it's my, my do-it-yourself Volt DC to DB audio meter hack. And I don't know what it is about this little device. I know I've made stuff that's a lot more complicated and cool stuff that I really like and use and different sounds that I can get with my homemade stuff. But I, this thing, I just absolutely think this is the coolest thing. Isn't it cool? So yeah, I'm gonna have to make some room in my rack and put it up there and uh... <laughs>
You could use, they have a noisy cricket or a ru ruby uh, amp, any kind of amp, the Stella amp, any amp like that would drive this. You could hack it together, use a bigger box, you could, you could use anything, literally a Walkman style cassette or tape recorder, anything that's going to boost the signal you could get this going with. Um, I wanted to make it small, work with this little box. It's, I don't have much room in my guitar area anymore. It's getting really ridiculous and adding something like this, but I couldn't resist. What a cool project, the homemade do-it-yourself VU meter hack. So thank you for joining me. I appreciate all the views and subs. I'm going to have some exciting pedal demos coming up. As the weather gets bad, I'm going to be probably doing some more DIY stuff for myself. So I appreciate all the views and subs. Stay tuned for more exciting stuff. And as always, keep on hacking. Catch it, man. Catch it, man.